Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to be sharpening a brand new plane blade. Hope you enjoy. So today I'm going to be sharpening this brand new plane blade. So what I need to do is go ahead, take it apart and I'll just show you what I was doing earlier. I took this apart and just gave it a quick clean with a bit of denatured alcohol. It had a bit of a, a finish on there to try and prevent it rusting. So, first thing we have to do when we get a new blade like this is all my plane blades are at 30 degrees. This will come at 20 degrees. Pretty much all chisels and plane blades will come at 20 degrees. Now, what I've got here is obviously a vintage plane blade. The same process applies to any modern plane blade that you might be fitting in a brand new plane or a blade like a hock blade that fits in a vintage plane. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to resharpen this to 30 degrees using the Tormek today. Then I'll get back to you and we'll work with the, the plain blade on the bench stones. So, as you saw there in that quick montage, I sharpened the plane blade up to 30 degrees on the Tormek. Now, it doesn't matter how you sharpen that to 30 degrees, but I recommend sharpening it to 30 degrees. You could use the bench stones, as I showed with my chisel video, for resharpening. Though, if you have to remove quite a bit, that could take some time. But I'll, I'll leave a card up here somewhere, if I remember, to link to the video where I um, resharpened and ground the chisel using the bench stones so you can check that out if that's something you want to do. So the next step I do in this process is as I don't use canvas and I roll the corners that's the next step I do with a brand new blade before I flatten the back because rolling those corners tends to leave a few burrs and then I'd have to put it back onto the stones anyway so this is the way I choose to do it. So what I have here is my Veritas honing jig with the cambered wheel on it and I'm going to use that right now just to roll the corners off. I'm going to be using my 600 grit diamond stone just so I don't dish out my uh, water stones. However, you could use the water stones, you just have to flatten them after. So what I have here is the blade clamped in here, set up using the fence as usual. I'm just going to wet this stone a little bit because diamonds to work best with a little bit of lubrication and you can see how we get that rock in it here and that is using the full extent of that cambered wheel on this jig and that is what I'm going to use to roll those corners. So I push down in the back here with my thumb, finger here, about 10 times and that's you can see that that's started to roll that corner. So I'll do that as much as I think is necessary until it rolls that corner right out of the way. So we can see that it's got quite a, a curve to it now, so that's going to be out of the way when we sharpen it. And you can just keep an eye on it. If that, keeps, if that gets in the way, you can just do this process again. Same on the other side. So we can see here now that this edge is rolled away, this edge is rolled away, which means that when we come to hand plane, they're not going to leave a little groove on there. So that is all we need to do for this point right now. The next process after I roll those corners is, and because it's a new plane blade, I need to ensure the back of the blade is flat. Because obviously when it comes to sharpening, as I've mentioned before, it's the coming together of two flat surfaces to a point that's going to give you a cutting edge. So we have to have a flat bevel meeting to the point here and a flat back meeting to that point to get a sharp cutting edge. So when it comes to flattening the back of a blade like this, uh, we probably only need to come in maybe an inch or so. It's going to take a lot of sharpening and a lot of use of a plain blade before you get back to this point. And then you can probably just flatten this last little bit. So you're only really sort of looking to flatten even a finger width like this. 
as long as you have enough flat area to have the uh, chip breaker have a nice smooth fitting against that blade. So two fingers here like this. I have my other one here and another one there. So I have four across, so I'm supporting right the way across the blade. And then my other fingers here are just supporting that blade. But all the pressure is up over on this end on the stone, so you don't tip it like this, because then you're not going to be flattening the back. So obviously that's the process for flattening there. Now, to know whether you've come right to the edge, I like to use the marker pen. And, you know, just putting a bit of pen there so you can see whether you've got right to the edge. Especially right on that edge, because you want to make sure that you're get, definitely getting that sharpening right to the edge of that blade. Because otherwise you're never going to get a sharp edge. Now a lot of these blades are not too bad, and this one, by the looks of it, looks like it's already pretty flat. What I'm going to do is just turn the stone around, and I'm just going to do this for a couple of minutes. Then I know 100% that it's nice and flat, although this is already telling me that it's flat and you could probably stop there. I like to just do it for a few minutes to ensure that I actually have it flat like I think I do. So there we go, I'm happy, and I can feel a burr right the way along the front there, so I'm happy that that's sharpened, and this section through back to here is now flat. So let's move on to the next stage, sharpening the blade. So, obviously now I'm going to mount this back into my Veritas jig with the flat roller. Obviously run through the sharpening again. Now I go through the 400, 800, and 1200 grit water stones, and then I use my strop with or without honing compound, it doesn't really matter. If you've got honing compound, you could use it. It makes it a little shinier, a little bit quicker, but you really don't have to. So I'm gonna run through a montage here. Uh, I want you to sit back, relax, and I'll be back to you once it's sharpened. for the burr. Bring it in like this. Now the blade is sharpened, stopped, and good to go, I would normally put the chip breaker on and test it. But since this is just the blade and I haven't done the chip breaker video yet, I'm just going to show you how well this chops just on a piece of end grain by itself. As you can see there, this blade is very sharp and ready to be put into a hand plane. Keep an eye out for the second video where I prepare and fit the chip breaker to the blade. So I want to thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like and comment below. It helps the video out quite a lot. And also, if you want to support me further, please check out my Patreon page where you get a few behind the scenes content 
depending on what level you subscribe at. Bye for now.